Welcome to NYIT Roundtable. I'm Denise Moore. Today we'll be discussing the African country of Ghana and the NYIT medical students who went to the country to open a medical clinic to provide much needed health care for the people who live there. I'm joined today by Dr. Edward Cho, the Assistant Director for MIIT Center for Health here at the New York Institute of Technology, and Courtney Briggs, a second year medical student at MIIT's New York College of Osteopathic Medicine. Thank you for joining us. Um, so Dr. Cho, can you tell me how did you wind up going to Ghana? Ghana was a collaborative between the MIIT's uh, Center for Global Health and the Road Foundation, a nonprofit organization that uh, is trying to develop sustainable solutions in rural Ghana. It, what was attractive about this project was that it involved not just medicine, but engineering, architecture, education, and business. And it's a collaborative that we are trying to develop sustainable solutions for the area. Now, why was this a good location for the students? It was a good location for the students because it allowed them the opportunity to experience clinical medicine, but also had a large support network from the local community, also the village leaders, also the Ministry of Health, and other leaders in the community. So how is this training beneficial for the students? The students have uh, training, obviously, in um, domestically, but they also the experience that they have internationally is different. What they learn in uh, both scenarios is virtually the same, but how they learn it is a little bit different. And so their experience of working in a resource poor area where they have to think on their feet and work with what they have makes it a very valuable experience. So Courtney, um, why did you want to participate in the trip? Well, I wanted to participate somewhere overseas for the summer. Um, and since NYIT was offering this, I thought it would be a great opportunity to get to experience different topics that we learned in class that you don't see in the United States, such as malaria, schistosomiasis, lymphatic filariasis, um, and things like that of that nature. So by going there, I was able to see firsthand what these diseases do, how to diagnose them, and treat them. Okay. So what types of things did you have to do to get ready to make the trip? Uh, we were required to, to have a lot of vaccines, different prophylaxis for malaria. We also had to prepare ourselves for no electricity or running water because we lived in a very rural area. So it's just, um, you know, more like sleeping on the ground and getting bug spray. So, <laughs> Now, how did your family feel about you going there? Uh, they, they felt very comfortable because Ghana is a very safe country compared to other African countries. Um, and we were traveling in a group and there were different professors going and especially because we had contacts in the area and um, an NGO that has already established a reputation there. So my parents felt pretty comfortable. Okay, so Dr. Cho, tell me, um, 36 hours to get there, what was that trip like? It was, it was a long trip, but it was, it was well arranged so we could actually get there, fly in and get to the area, but it was a long bumpy road, but it was it was worth the while. Now two planes to get there. Two Once you get there then what happens? Two planes and then a long bus ride uh, about seven hours on a very bumpy road. So tell me Courtney, um, was there anything that could have prepared you for what you saw once you got there? Um, we had lectures in the different types of diseases that we saw, so it was very interesting to see that firsthand. But in terms of the living situations, I'm not sure if anything really could prepare you for it because we're not used to having to walk 200 meters to go to the bathroom that's a community toilet or having to pump your own water in order to take a shower. So it was definitely an eye-opening experience, but the people of the village were very warm and welcoming and just made us feel like home. How valuable was it for you to go down there and practice medicine, essentially? By working with the people there, uh, they don't speak English, so we had to get used to, to um, translators. So that definitely prepared me for when I will be in practice and if I have a patient that doesn't understand English, to work with the translators to get their history and come up with a diagnosis and be able to explain to them what's going on. Um, it also gave me the opportunity to uh, work with patients. I had never had uh, clinical experience before, so it definitely made me feel more comfortable working with patients. Now, was there anything, um, you have a picture in your mind of what it's going to be like when you get there. Um, the plane lands, you, you take your very long bus ride. Was it different than you expected, even though you had a picture in your mind of what it would be like? Um, it was different, definitely, but I think I had 
uh, almost a worse picture. I wasn't expecting to be so welcomed into the community, but everybody had been looking forward to this clinic opening for a long time, so they were so appreciative of us being there. And there's constantly children running around wanting to play games, so there's never a dull moment, and it was just, it was very refreshing just to not have to have the TV on or anything like that, you know, just to sit and relax and, and have time to yourself. So what was an average day like? Well, we'd wake up in the morning and we worked in the clinic basically from 8 o'clock until the patient stopped coming. So there was no set closing hours, just um, usually around the, in the afternoon, 3 or so. Uh, it got dark pretty quickly, so we would maybe take a shower or play games with the kids for a while until the sun went down and then lit the candles and had, a, had flashlights and played card games for the rest of the night. So there was no power at There's night? no power. Wow, that must have been hard getting used to, mm -hmm. especially now um, everything we do here is linked up to some kind of technology. Mm -hmm. um, how much was, of an adjustment was that for you? It took a few days. I think the biggest adjustment was waking up to the roosters and the goats that were uh, outside at 4 o'clock in the morning. So that took a, actually I don't know if I ever got used to the roosters waking me up <laughs> in the morning, but um, and yeah, after a few days you, you get on the routine and you just wake up, you start seeing patients, and we stayed right at the clinic, so we didn't have to go too far. Okay, so how do you think this will help you be a better doctor? Uh, well, like I said, I definitely feel more comfortable working with patients, and so now when I start my rotations, my third year is not gonna be the first time that I'm in a clinical situation. So I'll feel more at ease and hopefully make my patients feel more comfortable too. Now, Dr. Cho, is that kind of the response that you got from the students that went there, that they thought this was a really invaluable experience? Sure. I mean, I think clinical training uh, to start it in your third year is, is a little bit late, and so starting them early on in their career is actually very important in their growth and how they think about what they learn in their books. And so it gives them an early jump start as long as they have proper supervision okay. and getting. Okay, I'm going to have to stop right there. When we come back, we'll continue our discussion about Ghana and the medical clinic that the NYIT students worked at there. Stay with us. Mm -hmm.